The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. My name is Courtney Pollock, and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Transform Your Business with Sage Intact, presented by Leslie Slepin, Linda Pinion, and Joe Santoro. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise to a minimum. However, throughout the webinar, you can submit any questions you have. If you'd like to submit a question, look for the questions section in your GoToWebinar, and we will answer all your questions at the, at the end of the presentation. We're also recording this presentation, and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees, as well as those who've registered but were not able to attend. And finally, please take a moment towards the end of our presentation to answer our survey question. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend this webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you with tools, support, software, and industry knowledge whenever you need it. So whether you're here researching a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions you have. And lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. We encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more content like this. With that said, I'll hand it over to Leslie to get us started. Well, thank you, Courtney, and thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Many participants on this call represent our most appreciated business partners, our customers, and we're thrilled that you've taken the time to learn more about the impact of digital transformation on the success of your business. Our mission for this session is simple. We want to stimulate your thinking about transformative technology and your capabilities for digital connectivity for accounting and operations. Let's start by introducing you to our panel today. Linda Pinion leads as a principal solution consultant at Sage Intact. For over a decade, Linda has introduced customers of Sage Intact to trends in accounting and ERP solutions. She's focused on one of the most exciting entrants in the cloud-based marketplace. Linda's skill is seeing customers where they live and sharing a new vision for the future. Joe Santoro is a Vice President of Business Development for SWK on the STAT team and is known for his industry-wide leadership and know-how and will present to you SWK's unique to the industry professional services offering. And as you heard, my name is Leslie Slepian. And while I'm new to SWK, I'm a veteran to the industry, both in accounting and technology. So here's our agenda for today. We'll set up the backdrop for the digital economy and how that's impacting small and medium-sized businesses. Linda will pick that mantle up and continue the discussion and move it to the Sage Intact platform and show you why we believe that Sage Intact is a leader in cloud ERP. And Joe will wrap up with showing you how you can get started. So unfortunately, we are not in the room together today. Um, our two-way bi-directional conversation is limited. So instead, we're going to ask you participants on this webinar to engage in a quick poll. I think it'll give us all a sense of where we're going um, in this session. So the questions for today, and Courtney, I'm not sure if they're up on the screen. Yep, um, we have the audience has the poll now. Uh, awesome, great. So we'd like to know very quickly, we're only going to take 30 seconds for this. Uh, are you actively engaged in making a change? Do you want to simply know more about the state of the industry? Um, or are you here to learn more about Sage Intact? So I'm going to be quiet for just a few seconds, and Courtney is going to reveal to us what the audience is thinking about today. Yes, thank you for those who have already answered and we'll give it a few more seconds to collect those last responses. And we are going to close out the poll shortly. Awesome. So we have the results on screen and it looks like we have a 100% response want to learn more about Sage Intact itself. Okay, well, you're in the right place, that's awesome. <laughs> Really terrific. Thank you so much. Well, let's get started talking a little bit about the backdrop, as I suggested. 
the words digital transformation or business transformation, they started appearing on the scene about 2016, uh, 2015, 16. Our business lexicon in accounting technology was infused by this sort of new norm for business in, in all sorts of business and media channels. Industry pundits talked about these revolutionary terms every day, but translating the importance and relevancy to small and medium-sized business in recognizable ways has come about more slowly. In some US businesses, certainly in some lines of business, revealing the need for adoption and what that would look like move more slowly in some lines of business. So whether it's the capital projects and a boom in the sectors such as real estate, construction or manufacturing even, Folks have had their hands full keeping up with demand, no less taking on the challenge of change. So whether businesses were sidetracked or whether the right solutions weren't commonly available for all industry sectors or the need wasn't clearly defined, everything has changed. So I giggle to myself when I hear the common expression, time flies. We all know that time moves at exactly the same pace as it always has, and unless you're a geophysicist and within a few moments of tolerance, but new studies have actually shown that the perception of time actually speeding up is thanks in part to an overabundance of technology. So depending on when you jumped into the business arena, you'll be familiar with some of these influencers on the screen in terms of the change in business technology. So whether machinery, programming, connectivity that drove them to those changes, digital transformation has been impacting and therefore accounting for decades. Not one investment is as critical as the explosion onto the scene of the expansion of the cloud into our daily lives and certainly into accounting. So by refusing to be tethered in our operations to tangible investments such as big box computers and obstacles of communication, our businesses have taken gigantic leaps into digital resiliency. The pandemic taught us immeasurable lessons, some painful and some great. At a time when people were advocating that accounting happens in the collective, collaborative manner, we were literally physically siloed and isolated. So let's take a moment to consider a few of the big trends in accounting and their impact on businesses. The first, business res resiliency. The tools to keep moving ahead seamlessly and with no service interruptions as we continue to do business from our homes and even from our vacation homes. It's not enough to have uh, in operational excellence to have hit your numbers. Accounting and operations need to provide business intelligence to all stakeholders in a very graphical and visual way. Key performance indicators, KPIs, flagging important trends rather than flipping to page 90 to see a graph that was created 20 days ago or 20 weeks ago. We want to smooth out any disconnect or disruption in our information flow. Well, what does that mean? By whatever means data flows into your system, it should only be touched once and done. We don't want to parse and filter results and then manually massage the data to get it into the books and records. We want to rely on seamless integration flows in an efficient, easy to manage way of tailoring our systems. We can implement workflows to enforce our business rules instead of 100 pages of procedure manuals and create visibility on how transactions move through the system without dozens of interfaces and supplemental spreadsheets. Reporting managed by your organization is something that comes up as a new problem. In this example, the CEO has a brainstorm. What's your first impulse? Call your consultants to write a new report? Probably not. You want a system that you can quickly query, ask questions, run analytic reports, get answers, no matter what, and how unpredictable the request may be. Finally, you want to be future ready. What does that mean to you? It depends on your line of business and your role in the organization. It may mean tying into a cryptocurrency market or revealing results from GuideStar or Charitable Navigator without processing 20 steps to do so or working through tasks based on hyperlinks rather than post-it notes. The way we engage with our clients today is different than a decade ago. Today, we're concerned with remote workforces, cybersecurity, flexibility, agility, and deployment. 
customers ask us about integrations and risk management. And most importantly, they already have had preliminary internal discussions about a digital strategy for the organization and defining that what that means to them. They're focused on digital connectivity, not only with their customers, but also with their suppliers. And it's very likely that part of that strategy includes true cloud-based solutions. Why? Because even though the industry has been able to lower the cost of solutions that were traditionally server-based and now are moved to the cloud, your dollars are partially being invested in technology infra infrastructure rather than true cloud offerings and all the benefits of interoperability, security, redundancy, maximized throughput, integration, sorry for the alphabet soup, but you know that's there, but these are the things we talk about. So going to a web page for a wiki while you're on screen learning is about intent. And it's just the right way to learn. Our customers want to take more ownership of their solutions and implementations to get there. All of the points that I've just shared with you lead us to the next step. Where do we go from here? Dashboards and business analytics, processing workflows, remote and mobile connectivity with any device. While we may miss seeing our desks and our offices, the comfort of being able to do real-time work at home with all the features and functionalities that we want, even with an iPad or an iPhone or an Android, cannot be beat. This list is not near long enough. A future-ready company will already be planning for the next great thing, whether it's machine learning or artificial intelligence. Our clients expect automated upgrades, dashboards that are meaningful to their roles in the companies, e easily modifiable workflows, and much, much more. So with that, it is my privilege to introduce you to a woman who's gonna blow the lid off of your education on the next generation of accounting solutions. Linda is going to translate these concerns to a viable picture of what you can relate to. Linda, we're ready to see how Sage Intact addresses the concerns of the future ready business. Thank you so much, Leslie. I appreciate the, the warm introduction and inclusion today. Um, I, I am a little bit intimidated, if, uh, if I can say that, by the poll that you ran. Uh, not too much pressure. Everyone wants to see Sage Intact, so it's a good thing I came with that um, loaded up and prepared. Before we uh, move to the next slide, I just want to make a, a couple of comments about some of the material that you've, <clears throat> excuse me, heard from Leslie. You know, one of the things that I'm happy to say is during my tenure at Sage Intact, and I have been here almost 12 years, it's really, it's really been a lot of change. And I know when Leslie started out, she was talking about change and all the different things that have changed in our world. And for those of us who uh, maybe perhaps started our career in accounting, uh, there have been many, many changes that have occurred. Not so much maybe in the way we think about accounting, as the way that we utilize technology to help us. And while today is, is really not all about technology, let me be clear. I chose to move to Sage Intact because uh, probably 50% of my decision was based around the fact that it was a cloud-based solution and technology really was moving in that direction. Companies were moving in that direction and today, uh, we have over 16,000 customers utilizing Sage Intact, and we're all using the same version of software. Now, uh, for those of us that have been around for a while, that, that may be um, pretty impressive. For those of you who are, uh, have never known anything but cloud or are younger, uh, maybe that doesn't mean so much, but this is a huge, this is a huge change in your thinking process. So today, what I want you to know is that when you see the product in a few moments, you're going to see a solution that is proven, that is being utilized today, again, by thousands of companies. It is a cloud-based solution. It does not come in any other flavor. 
So there's no, um, <clears throat> excuse me, there's no uh, on-premise solution available. And there is a, a big benefit to that besides all of the things that you probably already know. And that is that when we deliver this model, if you think about it, I always use the Southwest Airlines example. There's a reason Southwest Airlines flies one kind of plane, the 737. And that means that everyone is educated from the ramp people to the pilots, to the flight attendants. Everybody only has to know one plane, one layout, one emergency procedure, one process, because they're all on that one aircraft. That means I can take any pilot and I can move them to any flight on any airport and they can do their job. And, and that's all about consistency and cost. So keep in mind that being on that same version and having that same type of alignment means that this is very cost effective and it's also very efficient. So let's move to the next slide and let's talk a little bit about what we call the intelligent organization. So if you focus a little bit on the, the left-hand side there in the diagram, think about all of the connections and, and how these four pillars connected together really represent the vision of what an intelligent organization can look like. So if you think about um, time and, and people entering their time, and posting their time, that drives billing for performance. So if we automate that and we future-proof that time entry, then we are really assuring that your billing performance, that you're billing on time, that you're getting those, those invoices out so that you can get that money in. So we're really impacting your cash flow. If you look at the financial pillar there and you think about what kind of insights do you get from financials and from analytics, what does it look like based on history? That's going to drive better knowledge of what you need from a resources perspective. So now you're going to start to understand what kind of headcount do I need? And then when you look at how does headcount impact or drive better planning. So all of these pillars are connected together and they form what we call the intelligent organization. Now, in the Sage Intact world, uh, our product was built by accounting people for accounting people. And I would tell you that today our population at Sage Intact includes many accounting degree professionals, including many CPAs. So we are all about finances. We are uh, what you would call our core competency is finance. We also provide solutions for industry specific. So as Leslie said, you know, I'm interested in making sure that you have the right solution for your business requirements. And your business requirements in your industry could be and probably are different than another industry. The solution is designed and architected to grow with you. So if you're starting out today as a single entity, but you're going to move to multiple entities, and by the way, an entity is the same thing as a company, this is a solution that will grow with you and allow you to add those additional companies or locations or divisions very quickly. It's also flexible and accessible. So today I would tell you that it's not about data. We have more data today than we have ever had. When people say, well, I just don't have the data, that's really not the issue. The issue is getting to that data. So I call that access to information. And that's really 
what Sage Intact provides you is a way to get to that information from anywhere, anytime, 24-7, 365, as long as you have access to the internet and you have the proper permissions. That gives you access. The software is designed to be flexible and flexible and configurable are the two words that you wanna walk away with today. That's what allows you, as Leslie said, to future proof where you're going. So you are, are buying into something that is going to scale and that is going to carry you, even if your business changes, you're not in concrete, you're in jello. And of course, you know, at the end of this, the partnering that you have with SWK and with the Sage and Tax Solution is really all about your success. And we want you to be successful because if you're successful, then we are successful. So let's move forward and take a look at Sage Intact. And I know that Courtney is going to give me control. So I'll wait till she does that. And Courtney, let me just validate that you can see my screen okay. Yep, it looks good. Okay, all right. So I just need to make one quick movement here to move this little bar down so it's not in my way. So great. So if this is your first time to see Sage Intact, and it may be, I'm certainly not going to uh, cover every single field. So this is not going to be a training session. But let me just explain a few things that you're looking at here because there's a lot of information on this screen. And I want you to know that, uh, again, this is a scalable solution. It's also configurable. So the way that I have mine configured today and the way that I have logged into my instance of Sage Intact is into a, an environment that is managing multiple entities. And uh, that's one of the key takeaways is the fact that you can manage unlimited entities in one instance of Sage Intact. So again, whether you're one company today, you're 10 companies, uh, you acquire some other companies, you can add those as entities as we call it. And then you can set permissions so that you can provide access to individuals into the entities in which they need to transact. Now I've logged in today as Emma and Emma is gonna be my super user. So I don't have a lot of things restricted for her. So she can in fact pretty much go anywhere and do anything in the software. But what I would like for you to know is that permissions and security are in play. You can secure your users, your reports, and what we're getting ready to look at here, dashboards. So just a little bit about the user experience, always uh, available for you to move around and navigate different ways, uh, very simply through a menu-driven solution, be able to pick what you want to see or where you want to go in the software, task activities and reports. You also have what we call process maps, and process maps are pictorial so we're all moving to this visualization concept where we want to see a picture we want to we want to drive through a visual and this is a visual here in purchasing if you look at this middle swim lane this is a business process that lays out the steps to go from requisitioning through purchase order creation receiving and then receiving a vendor invoice so this is another way, just by clicking on the icon for you to navigate or go to a specific spot in the software. A third way that you can navigate, and you'll see me use this way today, is great if you know where you want to go and perhaps the order in which you want to do it. And that is by using a bookmarked menu. And this is all part of, you know, getting this streamlined and efficient for you as a user. So one of the things that, that I'd like for you to think about is when you make this transformation, when you make these changes, 
it, it should make your life easier. It should, it should improve your efficiencies. So today, as I go through the software, I'm going to point out some ways that you can do your activities, pr produce your reports, uh, really function in your role in a more efficient way. Part of that is because of the way we're designed, and part of that is because of the way that you can configure. Part of that design process is, in fact, incorporating AI, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. So we're looking at patterns of data. We're looking at historically what you've done in the past to help you move forward, to have that visibility, and again, so that you're not working so hard on tactical things, repeatable things, you're able to work on more strategic areas of your business. So you'll see me use this bookmarked menu. Again, it allows me to just quickly create my own little personal menu and then allows me to navigate back to those specific areas in the software. So coming back to this dashboard, uh, let's put on our controller hat for just a minute. And you know, for those of you who function in the accounting world, you know that there are some pieces of information that you want to see on a regular basis. One of those is a consolidated view. Remember that I am managing multiple entities. So having a consolidated view is important to me. So when I open up this dashboard, I am looking at that consolidated view. For some people that I talk to, this immediately saves them 40 hours a month. 40 hours a month, it's taking them to consolidate companies together to get that consolidated view. What's also important is being able to take that information and filter that information down to a specific entity. So in this case, I've said, I don't want to look at that consolidated view. I only want to look at entity 100. I represent the dashboard and 53,000 was the consolidated number. 30,000 of that belongs to entity 100. These are my general and administrative expenses. So being able to take that data and filter it at the dashboard level is pretty powerful. When I look at this information as a controller, these two lines here, these boxes that you're looking at, we refer to them as key performance indicators, and they are a way for you to be able to see quick business insight. So if I want to see my G&A expenses, I can drill into that and I can look to see how I'm comparing my actual to a budget. I can see here in office supplies, I've already blown it. I'm already over the budget. I can drill into the general ledger report and I can see exactly the transactions that make up that $7,600. And then I can drill into an individual transaction that gives me the source information. Here, I'm into an AP bill. I can see that it's been paid. I can drill into the check. I can see how it was coded. I can see how it was attached to what we call dimensions. And dimensions are a key way for you to tag transactions to one or more of the 12 predefined dimensions in Sage Intact. This is what allowed me to take that $53,000 and filter it at the dashboard level by a dimension. So I filtered it into just Entity 100. So dimensions are a way for you to tag transactions for reporting, and they're also a way that eliminates having a segmented chart of accounts. So when you think about what's modern and what's efficient, I have one chart of accounts that manages for all of my entities. And all that I need in that chart is my natural account. So I'm using a table-driven chart, not a linear chart, which is probably what you're used to. And I don't need to have segments of numbers that increase this string for an account number. All I need is that natural account. So what that means to you is, you're going to have a very lean and mean chart of accounts. It's going to maybe go from 3,000 accounts to maybe 300, and it's going to be easy for you to maintain. So dimensions allow me to filter this data. They also come into play when I think about a standard accounting report 
that I need in, in my multi-entity environment here. I need to see that consolidated P&L report, but I wanna see it by entity. So I've designed this report with a report writing tool that is designed for the business user. It's not a programming tool. It's something that you as a business user can utilize to create your financial reports. I see all three entities side by side in a consolidated column. I can drill into this information. I'm drilling into revenue that's been split out by product line. And again, I have that same drill down capability, drilling into a transaction. In this case, a sales invoice, seeing how it was coded, being able to drill to the next level and see the individual items that have been sold and where those items are tagged from a dimensional perspective, what channel I'm selling into, the warehouse and location I shipped out of, the department that I want to tag this to. These are all dimensions, part of those 12 that I referenced. And then for the accounting folks in the house, how important and how valuable would it be for you to be able to see how this information is being posted from a financial perspective. So here's the invoice that got posted. And here's what got posted into the sub ledger. So we are a multi ledger solution. We are multi entity. We are multi currency. We handle both domestic and global consolidation. So having all that information and being able to see it at your fingertips, pretty darn powerful. And then for those of you who maybe are in the service end of the business, you're talking to customers and customers are calling and asking, where's my order? Can I add something to my order? Can, can you tell me, did you receive my, my check? Can you uh, send me a copy of my invoice? The history tab here provides the history of the entire business flow. So I can see this started as an order. It went to a shipping document and then to a sales invoice. Everything is user date and timestamp. So if you're wondering about audit trails and about going back and understanding where the data came from, this is your history. This is your electronic filing cabinet. And then when a payment is made, having that at your fingertips as well, the cash receipts, where did I deposit it? When did I deposit it? How much was it? The check number, all of that information right here at payment details. So again, if you think about where I was when I started this process, I was here at the dashboard and I went all the way down to a cash receipt. I didn't have to call anyone. I didn't have to send an email. I could have possibly had someone on the phone and been answering a question real live time, live, real live information and a phone call all at the same time because these dashboards are up to date. They are posted through, they are real time up to date information. Now, there's a lot of dashboards in Sage Intact that I could share with you. Uh, these are all the different ones that I have created and have access to. That was just one flavor of a controller dashboard. I want to share another one with you because you know, one of the, the key takeaways today is how do you transform your organization? So how do you give the information that you need to the stakeholders within your company and make sure that they are getting what they need in a timely manner to make great business decisions. So I'd ask you for a moment to put on your revenue manager hat and walk through quickly with me the view that I have and what's important to me as a revenue manager. So the first thing I see is I see my revenue broken out by product line. So just for uh, purposes of today, you should know this is an alarm company. I sell different types of alarm systems and accessories. I divide my revenue into surveillance, entry, and accessories. And I know that anything in my business that's over 40% margin, I'm golden. So as the revenue manager, if I looked at this business inside, I would look at it and say, everything's perfect. 
everything is going in the right direction. I have these great visual indicators. I'm comparing that to a prior year. Uh, I can drill into this information if I wanted to, just like you saw me on the controller dashboard. But again, if I stop right here, I know that everything's perfect. However, uh, I'm going to dig a little bit deeper. And when I dig a little bit deeper, what I'm going to find out is I'm going to take that revenue and I'm going to filter it every way that I possibly can. And as I do that, I'm going to start to see that there's some trouble in paradise. And I will be able to locate the rep and the territory where that trouble is in play. So as I'm going through this, you're going to see revenue by quarter. You'll see uh, also the gross margin by quarter, and you'll start to see some color coding. So I've broken this out into my individual channels. I've then taken it and broken it into product lines, into different customer types, so the types of customers I sell to, and into my customer reps. Now what you're going to start to see is that Lisa Hoffman is in trouble. And you'll also see that a particular region is in trouble and Lisa happens to be in that central region. I also can break this out by entity and by warehouse. So now I have a, a really great picture of where my challenges are, where those red uh, highlighted areas are. I've done the same thing with the revenue trend by customers. So think about this. How long would it take you to pull this kind of information and it be up to date to the minute and accurate? I would tell you that you would probably spend hours, maybe days doing this. And this is, this is at my fingertips. So same type of information here, revenue trend by customers. But let's take it a little bit further and let's come down to another way to look at this. And this is using uh, a report that's telling me item profitability by product line. So now I can say within a product line, here are the two items that I need to focus on because they're not meeting that 40% margin. Additionally, I've got another report here that I've said the same profitability by rep. And remember, Lisa Hoffman is my rep that's in trouble. So now I go to Lisa and I say, this particular customer, these particular items are the ones that you need to focus on because they're not meeting that 40% margin. So now I'm able to tell Lisa Hoffman what to look at. Then I use my data visualization tool to say, okay, as the VP of, of sales, I want to look at how I'm tracking across multiple years, but only in the first quarter, but across all my customers, my customer service reps, and my territories. So now I have the ability to hover over this heat map and it tells me exactly by state what I'm selling and who's selling into that state. I also have the ability to come in and explore the data. And exploring the data says, I don't want to look at all my reps. I want to just look at, let's say, Amy Wallace and Sanjay. So now my map is reflective of just those two reps. So being able to filter and explore on the data on the fly allows me to have these data visualizations immediately. And then here's the one that I really think is, is more detailed than anything else, and that is, Let's say that I am the regional sales manager and I want to look at my two regions, Central and East, together. This is how they stack up. I'm comparing number of customers, the total revenue that they're generating in their average sale. By customer type, I can identify which customers are installers versus which ones are distributors and their respective revenue. Additionally, I can take that same information and I can look to see how it's being split out across my channels, commercial, residential, and what locations. I also can then take that data and look at it by customer service rep. And here's where we, we see the difference between Amy and Lisa. Amy is having an average sale that's quite a bit higher than Lisa. So in this sunburst map, what you see here is the drill down to see that Amy is selling to four different customer types, while 
Lisa is only selling to installers and distributors. So perhaps that's the reason there's a difference between their average sales because they're selling to different customer types. And then lastly, looking at the items and how those items are selling. So in a particular product line in surveillance, these are the two items that are selling. So why is all this important? It's important from a planning perspective. It's important from a scheduling perspective. It's important uh, for different areas of the business to be engaged with this. So what would it do if I shared this information with my purchasing team so they knew what items were selling in what product categories? How can they be better, smarter buyers without information like this? So this is the transformation. No more guessing. We now have data to support our business decisions and we have data visualization that helps us guide the business. All of this reporting that you see helps us run the business, but data visualization helps us guide the business. And this is something that every company is moving towards. This is what's going to get you to the future. So coming back out of the, the dashboard stories, and again, there are many that I could share. Let me share just a couple of other things before I do my wrap up. Uh, one of the things that Leslie talked about was artificial intelligence and machine learning. So one of the uh, areas that we are impacting our solution with that is around uh, helping you look at only what you need to. So in other words, if a transaction is accurate and is within line, we're going to go ahead and process that. But if we see some anomalies, we see some unusual things in the data, we're using AI to track that and trap that so that you can look at it before you post it. So in this example, it was a payroll journal entry that came in. And what was found was that there was some coding that they had never seen before. They didn't have that pattern of coding. So before this journal entry is approved, you're gonna get a message that says, you've got an outlier. And then we're gonna identify why we flag that as an outlier. So proactively, we're gonna let you fix that, correct it before you post it. Otherwise, you would post it, then you would come back, have to reverse it and re-enter it. So we're making you more efficient by utilizing that technology. And then one other example of technology, and this is one that uh, unfortunately it is something that all companies have to do, and that is balance or reconcile your bank account. So one of the things that people um, have, have wanted for a long time is to be online with the bank and to be able to do those bank reconciliations very quickly. So we take advantage of Sage Banking Cloud. And what this means is, is that we are online with the bank. And every four hours, your transactions are being fed to you. So if you want to do a bank reconciliation every day, you absolutely can. I don't know too many people who would want to, uh, but the functionality and the ability to do that exist because of technology because we're connected, because it's real time, because we're feeding you this information. You don't have to wait till the end of the month. What does that mean to a finance team? It means that I can usually cut days out of my close time because these areas like GL outliers, like connecting to the Sage Banking Club, these are ways that I'm gonna improve your experience, I'm gonna improve your efficiency, and I'm gonna use technology to do that. So that's really the transformation, transforming your business and doing that by utilizing a modern solution, a, an intelligent general ledger that you find in Sage Intact and by utilizing modern technology. So Courtney, I'm gonna ask if you could come back uh, to the slides and take it away from me and come back to my wrap-up slide. Okay. Well, and I'll do a quick summary here just of some points that you could uh, use to take away. 
as our closing point. And the first one would be to, to just embrace that new technology and to embrace perhaps your new role. So your role can change based on some of the advances that the technology will bring to you. Guide your business instead of running your business. You know, we all have gotten buried in lots and lots of reports. Now, uh, I just talked to a prospect this morning who wants to go paperless. And part of that is just, you know, getting efficient and getting organized and getting business processes defined. So, yes, you do need those reports, but let's look at them from a dashboard instead of printing all of these reports out. Let's use data visualization so that the data is doing the talking to us. The data is telling the story. And then please look to the future and embrace the intelligent organization. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Joe. Well, I'm gonna jump in real quickly, Linda, before uh, we do so, and, and just thank you so much. I love the way you present all aspects of the firm. Uh, and how they're going to be served by Sage and Tech. And I have to, I'm going to laugh here and tell you that I had never heard of visualized workflow being called a swim line. So I've learned something new today and thank you so much for that. And as Linda pointed out, we're going to have Joe Santoro, the Vice President of Business Development of the STAT team, shed a little bit of light on how you can actually start that journey. What resources do you have with SWK? Thank you, Leslie. And Linda, thank you very much. It was fantastic insight into how Sage Intact could be used uh, for our type of clients and their digital transformation journey. One of the things that I would like to highlight <clears throat> is about what does the STAT team do? We, we are known as the Strategic Technology Advisory Team, and we're, we're here as a complimentary service to our customers to help them bring their strategic plans and technology plans together in a collaborative format using our customer portal. And we work with our customers in terms of collaborating, communicating, and consulting with them to achieve their business uh, goals and objectives through a digital um, transformation plan. One of the goals for us is to really help you navigate through the process into moving into a newer technology that's, that's uh, future proven and really drive you to uh, business management solution success. You can go to the next slide. We have a pretty extensive team of uh, that individuals that really help you look at your business, put the, put the industry um, objectives that you have in front of your team and really drive for business solution success. We have several people on the business solution advisory team, as well as human capital management and IT services. One of the biggest challenges that our customers face in making a decision to move into a new digital platform is transitioning out of their current ERP solution. And with our team, we provide a transition advisors to make that transition smooth to uh, newer technologies. Our ultimate goal is planning it together with you and really moving forward to the next uh, journey in your ERP adventure. So, uh, Leslie? Thank you so much, Joe. So yeah, we're very excited with the STAT team to be able to offer you pathways. You don't have to figure this out yourselves. You can use our resources to go to the next level. And we've enumerated some of the things that are there. Uh, within SWK to help you, whether it's our webinars, which uh, thank you for, again for participating today. We have a lot of links and more information that you can study yourself. You don't have to look all over the internet. It's right there prepared for you. And certainly your SWK account manager uh, can also be a conduit to get you started. So with that, I am going to turn things back over to Courtney 
and we've got hopefully a few questions that we would uh, like to respond to from our audience today. Courtney, do you have anything online? Yes, thank you, Leslie. Um, we're now gonna open it up for questions. So if you have any questions, please go ahead and enter them into the questions section of your GoToWebinar. And we'll give it a minute for more of your questions to come through. And just a reminder, we do have some subject matter experts here today. So it's a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. And with that said, we do have a couple questions that came in throughout the presentation. So if some of my presenters could answer, um, can we use Intact to integrate with a solution that we are already using, like a sales tax, payroll, or business intelligence tool? So the answer is yes. And I will expand on that a little bit because that speaks directly to our model. Our model is best in class. And what that means is every area of your business or organization gets to choose what's best for them. So let's just say as an example, uh, today you're a, a healthcare organization, you have uh, some sort of billing solution that you've been using for a long time, you love it, it works, you are not interested in replacing it. However, there's information in that billing system that you want to be part of your financial engine. And so that speaks exactly to what we do and what we do best. And that is to take other best in class application data from that billing system and integrate that into our financial engine. There's a couple of different ways that that can be done. It can certainly be automated and it is really the way that our entire solution was architected so that we could be the best financial management solution which is exactly what the AICPA says the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants they say we are the best cloud-based financial management solution however we can now integrate with other solutions to give you the complete solution that you need so a lot more detail than just yes, but if you have an interest in discussing that, I know the SWK team can open that conversation up for you. Thank you, Linda. And our next question is, we have multiple accounts. What happens if they have a different chart of account? So from a Sage Intact perspective, you know, one of the things that I would always encourage uh, people to do having been an implementer in a previous life, whenever you evaluate a new software solution, you're evaluating it because there's obviously something in your current solution that's not meeting those requirements. It's a time when it's really advantageous for you to look at all of your processes, to look at how you do things, to look at the why behind why you do things, and part of that may be understanding why you have different charts of accounts and if those charts can be utilized as a single chart that is very advantageous in sage intact however it's not the only way that you can use sage intact so uh, we're going to encourage you if at all possible to get to a single shared chart because it's easier. It's easier for you to maintain. It's easier uh, in lots of different ways. If you can't, if there's just no way, no how, you can still utilize Sage Intact and we do that with a different configuration. So you'd still be able to maintain those different charts and then be able to consolidate those utilizing a different configuration. So both ways are doable. Great. And it actually looks like that's all of our questions, which I think is due to Linda's thorough demo. So again, I'd like to thank you so much, Leslie, Linda, and Joe for a great presentation and for taking the time to be with us today. And I'd also like to thank everyone in the audience for attending our webinar, and we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Appreciate the opportunity. Thanks, all. Thank you, everyone.